Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this session, which is um, uh, somewhat an unusual session. It's called, uh, I don't even know the title, ITAM uh, yes, Highlights and History. And uh, uh, hopefully it'll be that and a little bit more. Um, I was, I think as a chair, I'm given four, uh, no, 15 minutes. And I think I will use 20% of it, and the rest uh, can be divided uh, equally among the four uh, speakers in this, in this session. Um, I, was I was not there when ITAM uh, as an idea was being conceived, but I was there when during the growing, uh, uh, its growing pains. Uh, so I uh, witnessed uh, many of the things that uh, Alex and Kate did. Um, for instance, Alex coming to work at uh, 11 o'clock at night when I was there. And <laughs> but um, the, the two talks in, in the previous session by uh, Jake Taylor and, uh, and Ron Pepino, I think demonstrated that uh, AMO physics, atomic molecular and optical physics in general, has gone through an enormous transformation in the last uh, 15, 20 years. Um, to give you an idea, since 1997, there have been nine Nobel Prizes, uh, prize winners in AMO physics. Uh, eight in experiment and one in theory. Um, but back in the 80s, 70s and 80s, um, it was uh, realized that there was a major crisis of uh, not having enough atomic theory, when I say atomic, I mean atomic, molecular, and optical theory in the United States, especially in uh, prestigious universities, including obviously uh, here. And, uh, and the, the two major uh, practitioners in AMO theory were Alex D'Agarno and uh, Ugo Fano, who was at that time in the University of Chicago and was almost uh, retired. There were some people in chemistry, obviously, but, but in physics, there were effectively two people who were training students. And there was a report in 1987, which I think uh, uh, Dick Pratt and, uh, and, and Barry Schneider and some, uh, and maybe Kate also and, and Rick will point to, uh, was authored uh, in 1987, but published by the National Academy. It was the, the State of the Theoretical Atomic AMO Sciences in the United States. Um, which essentially said that uh, work needs to be done. Among his recommendations were that an institute be created in the United States to foster the AMO theory and also established uh, new AMO positions at uh, large universities. Um, and I, I'm happy to report that both of them have been accomplished. And I think now uh, Dick Pratt will come Okay, to give you a perspective, Dick Pratt and Barry Schneider will give the, hopefully, perspective from the NSF side, National Science Foundation side, and the community, but of course they're free to say whatever they want, and I hope they say a lot, and Kate uh, and, and Rick, as the, uh, Rick as the second uh, director of uh, ITAM, will give uh, this side of this, of this story. So it'll be a relaxed, anecdotal, you know, uh, session. Uh, we could even serve wine, but uh, we're not allowed to, so we won't. Um, the whole uh, premise is that uh, it's been a long, hard period. Uh, ITAM has been in existence since 1989, by the way. So it's been 19 years. Right? 88, really? 88, okay, 20 years. So we'll be celebrating the 20 years anniversary of uh, ITAM. So please, thank you. 